Hi, <laughs> welcome to the Momentous Institute new family orientation video. My name is Daniel Moll and I am the principal at Momentous. And I'm really excited to be joined by two wonderful people who are going to introduce themselves. My name is Maria Christensen. I'm the director of early childhood at Momentous School and we're here to welcome you. And my name is Monica Ariano and I'm the family guidance coordinator for this school and I also welcome you. So we're going to be sharing a PowerPoint for our conversation today. Um, feel free to take notes. You can also pause it if you need to throughout the time. Um, a lot of really useful information. And so here we go. This is our family orientation video for our pre-K-3 and pre-K-4 family. Welcome. So we are so um, excited um, that you showed interest in our program, interest in our school. We're also really excited to tell you more about Momentus and what our school is. Um, what our goals and expectations are, um, the information that we're going to share today, this applies to when we're in person um, and to distance learning. And so this applies to a lot of different situations. Um, and so a lot of this information or all of it's really designed so that you know um, what to expect and what, what, our, what your experience will be like um, in our pre-K-3 and pre-K-4 classes. And also then I want to share, if you have any questions, um, please feel free to contact us, uh, whether by email um, or by phone. Um, the phone numbers and emails of I, any of us here or just the school in general should be listed in your school handbook. Um, you should have received that handbook um, possibly um, at some point in your recent visit to the school. I also want to share um, a little bit more about our school and what we call connecting the dots, um, as well as our uh, core values and mutual expectations. So in terms of um, connecting the dots that we have here in um, quotation marks, if you'll see at the very bottom of this slide, um, there is Salesmanship Club of Dallas with a heart over it. And it has an arrow that um, is pointing to and says hosts the. Um, AT&T Byron Nelson, which is a golf tournament, um, an annual golf tournament, and then you'll see another arrow which benefits Momentous Institute. So Momentous School is a part of Momentous Institute, and we have lots of elements um, and groups that are associated, and so we just wanted to give you kind of an overview of how everything's connected so that when you hear these elements, you have a greater understanding of, of how they're connected. So again, the Salesmanship Club of Dallas is an organization um, that um, meets uh, regularly and they host this um, fundraiser which benefits Momentous Institute. Again, Momentous School is a part of uh, Momentous Institute. And so Momentous Institute also has a set of core values and um, we wanna talk a little bit about those core values. Uh, those are respect, stewardship, innovation, collaboration, and hope as you see in these um, circles um, on the might be right or left of your screen and um, within those core values um, our school has uh, what we would call mutual expectations so within those core values there are things that you as a parent and um, your child as a student at our school can expect from us regarding those uh, core values and there are some things that we will also expect of our families uh, regarding those core values uh, for instance within respect um, showing care and consideration for the needs of all people while learning um, about the diverse perspectives and cultural traditions in our families, communities, and world. So we would have those kinds of expectations for families. And then also you can also expect those sorts of things from us, um, as well as collaborating with you all, um, holding hope, um, being innovative, and then also stewardship, which is taking good care of everything that's been entrusted to us. So next we'll talk about some general information about our school. Um, we began school on Tuesday, August 25th. Um, you are probably aware that we have an extended school year. So our school year is 11 months. Um, we begin approximately the middle of August and we end approximately the end of June. Um, in our early childhood program, we are accredited by the National Association for the Education of Young Children. And um, this is really a gold standard in early childhood programs. 
um, you have some information in your packet about that programming um, and accreditation that looks like this. Another focus that in something that we prioritize is social emotional learning. You'll hear a lot about that from your own child and from your teachers. We know that this um, is prioritized and ensures academic success for our students. Um, each year, our teachers make home visits, and this year those occurred on August 12th through the 14th in a virtual format. And you can expect um, each year that um, teachers will be visiting your homes before school begins. Next are the names of our teachers in early childhood and whom you've already met. So Ms. Cabrales and Ms. Armendariz in our pre-K-3 program. Uh, Ms. Garcia, Ms. Ramirez, and Ms. Guerrero in our pre-K-4 program. And then in, um, a list of other employees or staff members. And so that's myself, Ms. Christensen, um, the Director of Early Childhood, Ms. Arellano, our Family Guidance Coordinator, Mr. Knoll, our School Principal, Ms. Montoya, who is our Administrative Assistant, Ms. Grauberger, our Library and Media Specialist, and Ms. Diaz, our student information specialist. All people there that are um, available to you and help guide you um, in your, uh, ser the services that we have. And so to go back just a, a second to uh, social and emotional learning, um, we're gonna show just a, a brief video um, from the school that um, gives a little inf more information about this. We define social emotional health as the ability for children to understand and manage their emotions, their reactions, and their relationships. We want children who are self-regulated, who are able to have positive relationships with peers and adults and see themselves as contributing to their communities. We know that children who have strong social emotional health are happier, healthier, and succeed in school at higher rates. We also know that it is equally important for the adults who are working with children to have strong social emotional health themselves. So when we have this combination of people who are able to function in a way that is socially emotionally healthy, everyone's happier, everyone is more joyful, there's more learning that takes place, and we're able to have a happier community. And so those smiling faces that you saw in that video, we're, um, we're really excited to um, figure out how to navigate this year. We know that this year is, is different. Um, we're, we're, we're responding to a global pandemic um, and we've had to adjust our school year to meet those challenges. Um, and so with careful planning with our school team and families, um, we have landed on three different learning models for our school year. So you'll see on the screen, we have a distance learning model, which is 100% of instruction at home a hybrid model, which is 50% at home, 50% at school, and then 100% in person. And our hope and our goal is to end up back in person every day um, as soon as it is safe to do so. Right now, our school model is 100% distance learning. Um, we're prioritizing the safety of our children, of our families, and of our staff. Um, and we're constantly monitoring um, local um, health guidelines and, and monitoring what else is happening in our communities. And when we decide that it's safe, we will move to um, a hybrid model. Um, we don't know quite when that will be. Um, but we'll be sure to keep you well informed um, of the changes and decisions that we're making as a school.
Okay, moving on to um, our school day, just to give you a little information about um, our school day. Of course, you will be working uh, during distance learning with your teacher, your child's teacher, um, to learn how that school day will be set up and, and how best to set up the communication between home and school. Um, once uh, we are in person um, and that learning resumes in, in that format, then uh, pre in pre-K three, um, we ask that, um, as well as in pre-K four, that families walk their children to the classroom each day and sign them in. Um, in pre-K three, the morning session begins at 7.55 and the afternoon session begins at 12 noon. Um, and students are considered tardy uh, by 7.56 and 12.01. Um, and again, the teachers are waiting inside the classroom to greet the children as you're coming in to sign them in. Um, if for the morning class, if you were assigned to the AM class for pre-K three, um, that uh, will be Monday through Friday. And um, the afternoon class meets on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. There is no afternoon class on Wednesdays. Uh, at the end of each session, which is 10:55 uh, uh, for the morning class and 2:55 for the afternoon class, the teachers will walk the children outside to the front curb to be picked up. In pre-K four, again, you're walking your child to the classroom to sign um, him or her in at the front door, and the teaching assistant, Ms. Guerrero, um, will be waiting for them. Um, Arrival begins at 7.56, excuse me, arrival beginning at 7.56 is considered tardy. School is dismissed each day at 2.55 for pre-K-4 students, um, except on Wednesday when all students at Momentus are released at 1 p.m. And on Wednesdays, pre-K-4 is released at 12.55. And teachers do walk children outside to the front curb to be picked up and signed out, and there should be within your school handbook or manual, also a map in terms of where uh, pre-K three and pre-K four students are waiting outside at the curb because there is a designated spot. I'd like to share some information with you about sleep and how important that is for your children um, before they begin their school day. Um, we know that the American Pediatric Association recommends 12 hours of sleep for children in this age range of three and four years old. Um, we ask that you consider this um, as you plan your days and your evenings with your children in pre-K three. Um, if your child is going to attend the morning session, that they be asleep uh, between 7.30 and 8 o'clock each night so that they are well rested and ready for that um, big day in, in pre-K three. Um, and then in pre-K four as well, um, again, this is when in-person learning resumes, um, that students are in bed and asleep between 7.30 and 8 o'clock each night. Um, in pre-K four, our students do nap um, and they are provided a cot each day and um, that's designated just for them with their name on it. We ask that you send a small blanket for them um, each Monday and then on Fridays that blanket is returned home so that it can be washed and sent back on Monday. Another particularly important component is nutrition. Um, so we want to explain a little bit about expectations, what you can expect of us, um, and vice versa. Um, students are served a breakfast in the pre-K-3 um, classroom in the morning beginning at 7.30 and to, to 7.45 if they are going to participate in breakfast. Lunch is provided in pre-K-3 for the afternoon session beginning at 12 and ends at 12.15. We will be providing you with a copy of all the menus so you can anticipate what your students will be um, having for each of those meals. In pre-K four, uh, students are served breakfast beginning at 7.30 and they have lunch at each day. Um, and we do follow the federal nutritional guidelines. Additionally, we'll ask that you send a small snack with your child each day. We ask that those snacks be healthy that they don't contain any added sugar, 
and you'll be receiving a list of snacks of sort of appropriate snacks for your child from their teacher. And next we're going to share a little bit about parent involvement. Um, truly, you know, children are more successful um, when, again, uh, parent involvement is, is, is strong. And so uh, for this reason, we have really designed a program that requires a strong commitment from our families. Um, so you've heard that we have home visits um, annually with teachers so that you're able to uh, meet teachers of your children before school starts every year. This year, those were uh, virtual. Um, there are three opportunities throughout the year to uh, meet with teachers for parent conferences and learn about your child's growth um, and learning for the, the most recent 12 week period. Um, and in addition to that, um, in pre-K three, um, myself and a team of parent facilitators um, whom you should meet very soon, uh, will be working with all of our pre-K three families um, as well as our pre-K four families. Uh, we plan to share helpful information, strategies uh, based on your input for supporting your child's growth and all of your goals for them um, and their development. We plan on having group sessions, really accessible content, uh, materials for your home um, to support that, um, as well as ideas uh, for parent and child time, which we uh, call PACT. And so this component when you're in pre-K three is a two year requirement. So um, it is an integral part of what your child's experience will be in our early childhood program, which is pre-K three and pre-K four. And once in-person learning resume, resumes, um, we will uh, work together to plan for a transition to the classroom. So we'll be working together uh, with you, but especially um, the classroom teacher to help transition into the classroom. And um, in pre-K four, uh, we'll be offering the same elements um, as in pre-K three in terms of sharing information, um, supporting your child's growth and the, and the goals and hopes and dreams that you have for your child. Uh, through content, home materials, um, packed ideas, and um, the only difference is that this component of the program is a one-year school commitment, so through pre-K-4, um, whereas in pre-K-3, you can plan on participating fully pre-K-3 and pre-K-4, and again, teachers will work uh, with, once in schools, uh, learning resumes, uh, your teachers will be working closely with you to help transition students into the classroom. And with that, I want to share um, a brief video about um, this, these sessions that I've mentioned. Um, and this is what they look like when in-person learning uh, was taking place. And um, we hope to share that same spirit um, even through um, distance learning and videos and make it even more um, accessible and flexible with that. As a parent coming to the PAC meetings, um, you kind of come in with a, the, the actual feeling that maybe you're the only one that feels the way that you feel about your child's education, the importance of his learning and the process of learning and activities that he does. With that, you come and you find like-minded people who feel the same exact way that you do, so it makes you feel part of the community. It makes you feel like you're understood and embraced by everyone that's here. I am a parent facilitator at Momentus. My role in PAC time is to help parents do activities with their kids where they can both learn together, but we focus on the development of the child because they are at a stage where they have to acquire as many abilities as possible. Uh, my name is Orlando. I have three children in this school at Momentus. Eh, a mí las sesiones de este de esta escuela me, me interesan mucho porque estoy involucrado en la escuela con mis hijos y ellos al verme aquí se motivan 
eh, también creo que es muy importante para los padres que se sientan involucrados eh, porque aprenden de este, eh, sobre sus hijos. The experiences that we're taking from here, the lessons that we're learning as far as health and benefits, saving communication, bilingualism in the actual household, it benefits us because we can take this home, we teach it to our kids. So walking away from here, it makes it a lot easier in that downtime when it's so much easier to put the TV on or give them a tablet to actually interact with them and challenge their mind and see what they can learn from as far as that. So anything that we take from here is just so beneficial because we're learning right alongside with our children. So it's just amazing. Los sueños que yo tengo para mis hijos es que alcancen pues un logro ya sea universitario, que tengan una carrera, que se que se lo que cumplan sus sueños y que pues no se vean limitados, que lo que ellos sueñen lo cumplan también. Okay, so let's uh, continue now talking about curriculum. I'm sure you're curious about um, what your students will be learning when they come to school. And so um, when in-person learning resumes, you can know that children in our early childhood programs are learning every day um, by working with different materials, um, being with their teachers and being with their friends. One of our focuses is on um, vocabulary development and language development. As you can imagine, we know that um, students with a very large vocabulary, um, it is directly correlated to their success in reading. And so it is a big focus for um, our program. So um, actively working with students each day around language development is part of their day. As an NAEYC accredited school, you can also expect that your students will be taught in all the subject areas such as language arts, math, science, art, and music, as well as um, a program in physical education. So um, that is all done as well in sort of an exploratory and develop developmentally appropriate um, way. Um, of course, you know that our social emotional uh, learning is happening each day as well. Um, that's facilitated through a specific curriculum that we have developed uh, with our teachers. And so that will be happening um, in the classrooms where your children will learn about important life skills like self regulation and self control. Um, and know that primarily our instruction is given in English with lots of support in Spanish. Um, we value um, bilingualism as you will learn more and more about and so um, that is available for our students as well. I'll share a little about clothing and uniforms. So all our students at Momentus do wear a uniform um, and you see here um, an example, some samples of what that would look like. Um, we do ask that because students play outside every day um, that they wear an athletic shoe that is either mostly black or mostly white, um, as close as you can get with socks. Um, no sandals or slip-on shoes just to kind of keep them safe and, and, um, and able to, you know, fully participate in everything. Um, so we also ask just in general to, to keep in mind the purpose of school is to educate children. Um, and so we just ask that families uh, really make an effort to um, limit distractions, you know, in their, um, in the student's attire and, you know, just group making grooming choices that will help with that as well. Um, 
Also, although children should be uh, potty trained, we know that accidents do occur and, and that's absolutely normal. So we will ask that families send a complete extra set of clothing uh, for the teachers to keep in the classroom at school. So that would be a complete set of, um, depending on the season, shorts and or pants, um, a shirt, underwear and socks. So you see that the um, dress code here is a khaki bottom or a khaki um, uniform dress. And uh, you see that it is also the red polo shirt. Um, move forward there. Yeah, lastly, um, we'll talk a little bit about research. So research is a big component of our school. And we want you to know that as a family participating at Momentus, you will be involved in that research. and. The research will um, look like questionnaires, um, surveys that will be sent out to you. We want to know how we are doing as a school, but we also want to track on how our students are doing, not only while they're with us, but after they leave us. So uh, there is a commitment from families to continue in the research after they have left Momentus. Um, you'll hear more about that um, as, as you come back you know, to school and, and we're back in person. Um, also, in terms of research, we partner with the University of Texas at Dallas. We participate in a language research um, that's happening and that focuses on bilingualism. And you'll hear more about that um, from Dr. Rojas, who works closely with us. And um, we are currently working with the National Center for Families Learning in um, their Toyota Family Learning Grant. And that is where our um, families are gathering for the pack time and for um, parent learning time. And so there is research, a research component of that as well. So we'll talk a little bit about what else is in your packet. Um, your packet should also include a school supply list. Thank you. Um, it should also include um, a doctor's statement. Um, this doctor's statement will be um, important to uh, bring at some point before um, students begin school in person. Um, in-person learning. Um, and that doctor's statement essentially um, needs to be uh, signed uh, by the doctor's office and it just essentially approves the student um, to be in health and uh, good health to participate in normal everyday activities. So therefore, a special doctor's appointment doesn't need to be made. Um, if a child has had a recent, uh, within the last months, uh, within at least a year, um, a, a physical or well check, um, typically doctor's offices will be able to complete just the form based on the most recent physical or well check. Um, also, um, you should have in your packet um, an agreement response. Um, this is very important. Um, you will see on that agreement response, um, essentially all of the information we've shared today, it's your opportunity to take that information and assure that this is going to be um, the best fit, fit possible for your family and sign that agreement and return it um, to our school. And I'll let Ms. Christensen, if you wanna add anything and then also speak to the reply. Sure, sure. So um, just once you have finished um, viewing the, the video, then you can email me to let me know that you've seen it. And um, if you have any questions, you can include those there as well. And that should conclude our video. So we look forward to having you in our momentous family. Thank you so much for watching this and we look forward to working with you this year. Thank you. Thank you.